hello an important blood test which measures cholesterol and this test we often do lipid profile people who are suffering from diabetes high blood pressure a family history of high cholesterol obese all these people they are asked to do this every six months or one year because cholesterol is one of the very important risk factor for many problems and diabetic blood pressure cholesterol everything is there the possibility of uh, heart trouble is so we must know what is a lipid profile one the lipid profile measures three important things apart from the total cholesterol the three important things are the ldl supposed to be a bad cholesterol and hdl a good cholesterol supposed to be apart from that a type of fat triglyceride so total cholesterol hdl ldl and triglyceride all these are measured only to predict a very bad outcome if you have more ldl and less hdl and more triglyceride ldl is said to be bad because it gets deposited inside the blood vessel and narrowing it contribute to the clogging of the arteries or what you called uh, blocking of arteries you may go into an attack either a stroke or heart attack like that hdl is good because this hdl tries to remove this depositing ldl and it takes this ldl back to the liver where it is reduced as far as the values are concerned your total cholesterol should be less than 200 milligram per deciliter your ldl should be less than 100 milligram per deciliter your hdl around 50 milligram and your triglyceride should be less than 150 milligram per deciliter when the values are high your doctor immediately says take less cholesterol in your diet you start reducing fat thinking cholesterol and fat are same they are different cholesterol is a waxy substance produced inside our body it is very difficult to reduce cholesterol by controlling your diet because only 20 percent of the cholesterol is from the dietary source remaining 80 percent liver manufactures when you reduce the intake of cholesterol but to compensate this the liver will increase its production so it is very difficult to control by dietary restriction so what is the best way of reducing a blood cholesterol level if you reduce the manufacture or the production of ldl cholesterol by the liver by any means definitely your blood cholesterol will be less especially the ldl cholesterol will be less if you take medicines for that matter you have medicines to reduce ldl you don't have medicines to increase your hdl cholesterol so the choice is reduce ldl and how you can do is reduce the production of cholesterol by liver if you reduce your ldl cholesterol it is almost equal to increasing your hdl because instead of increasing your strength we can reduce the strength of your enemy that is ldl suppose you have a food which prevents the absorption of cholesterol from the diet and a food which decreases the circulating cholesterol by acting on the liver then these foods can be superfoods one when you take cholesterol it is not absorbed second the circulating cholesterol is reduced because the liver takes it how this is done by this food cholesterol is not 100 percent bad we require cholesterol the cell walls request cholesterol hormone synthesis certain vitamin production and one important thing bile acid production for all these things we need cholesterol if you take bile acid this is produced by the liver the function of bile acid is to digest the fat which we consume the bile also helps in the absorption of fat soluble vitamin the point is to manufacture bile the liver utilizes the circulating cholesterol every day the liver produces about 800 to 1200 milligram of cholesterol and after utilizing this cholesterol for the cell wall the hormone production the vitamin synthesis and bile acid production the remaining circulating cholesterol only that is what we are measuring and it should be less than 200 milligrams if it exceeds that limit then we will try to know 
whether the LDL is increased and triglyceride is increased. So thing is, we need cholesterol at the same time, it should not exceed the limit, especially the LDL. As I said, the bile acid which is produced by the liver uses the blood cholesterol to manufacture this bile acids. And these bile acids are stored in the gallbladder. And when you take a fatty food, this bile which contains the bile acids is released into the intestine and it helps in the digestion of the fat. But the point is, the bile acid which is released into the intestine after the digestion of fat is over, this bile acids go back to the liver. That means the bile acid is reused or recycled. So there is no need for the liver to produce fresh bile acids. Once a bile acid is there, is utilized again and again. By some means, if we prevent this recycling or reusing, the liver will be forced to take cholesterol from the blood to manufacture bile acids. And this is the concept behind using a particular food which does this job. This recycling is prevented by oats. How? Oats contains a, a particular substance called beta-glucon. This beta-glucon is a soluble fiber. It dissolves in the water and it produces a gel-like substance. And the concept is this gel-like substance has got an affinity towards the bile acids. So the bile acids stick to this gel and the whole thing is excreted from the body. The recycling is prevented. But, but the liver has to produce bile acid. So it is forced to take cholesterol from the blood. So thereby the blood cholesterol level is decreased. This is the concept behind taking oats and thereby the level of blood cholesterol is decreased. And that food is oats. And because beta-glucon is a fiber, the fiber is not absorbed. Without absorption or digestion, it is excreted. Of course, there are various uh, forms of oats. And the best thing is the steel cut oats, which is not much refined. And it, is, it has got more fiber when compared to other types of rolled oats, etc. The next food which you are going to see, they, they prevent the absorption of the cholesterol from the dietary source. How? You have a substance called phytosterols in every plant and in every vegetables, etc. This phytosterols are present in every cell. Like every human cell has cholesterol in this cell wall, the plant cell wall contains this phytosterol. The point is, the phytosterol resembles in structure. Phytosterol has got a same structure as cholesterol. When you take this vegetables, the phytosterols which is present in the vegetable will go and occupy the site in a cell to which the cholesterol will be attached. So in every cell there is a site which will attract cholesterol for its absorption. That particular site is occupied by this phytosterol because this has got the same structure as cholesterol. Now the cholesterol finds no place to get attached with the cell so it is not absorbed and the cholesterol leaves our body. The interesting fact is after some time the phytosterols which are attached with the cell they are pumped by the cell away for some reason. Why this is important is these phytosterols are not absorbed. They leave the body without absorption or digestion. So there is no question of what will happen if the phytosterol is absorbed, will it cause some side effects, something like that. So now this phytosterols, which are present in vegetables, plants, some oils, vegetable oils, broccoli, cabbage, and nuts, all this contains this phytosterol. This prevents the absorption of cholesterol and oats prevents the recycling of bile acids. In other words, these two foods work in different ways, thereby they reduce the blood cholesterol level, especially the LDL. Oats make the liver to take cholesterol from the blood and phytosterols in, in the plants prevent the absorption of cholesterol. 
So these two act like medicines actually. In fact, there is a medicine which acts like oats. They are called the bile acid sequestrants. They sequestrate the bile acid. Cholesteramine, that is a drug which acts exactly like oats. So when you take oats, it is equal to taking that medicine. So now I can say the food acts like a medicine. At the same time, they act like a food also. Apart from this, the bonus point is when you take this oats and all, because of the soluble fiber, they prevent the blood sugar spike. One. Second thing, they reduce the calories. So naturally, it helps in the weight management also. So when you take this type of food, you have triple benefits. A reduction in LDL cholesterol, a reduction in the blood sugar spike and also weight management. So this is a proven fact. Next question is how much beta glucon is needed and how much it will reduce. If you have 3 to 4 grams of beta glucon, then that will reduce 4 to 5 percent of LDL cholesterol. So now how much, uh, how much oats we should take to get this amount of beta glucon? If you take just 50 grams of oats, you will get around 2 grams of beta glucon. So just to take 100 grams of oats, you will get 4 grams of beta glucon. That will reduce 4 to 5 percent of your LDL cholesterol. And if you take oat milk, in 250 ml of oat milk, you will have 1 gram of beta glucon. So next time when you take a lipid profile and if your LDL is high, don't worry. These two foods can definitely work and it is proved. They are just food. So you are taking a food and that food acts like a medicine. I think so you can try this and get benefit. We will meet some other time with some other topic. I am Dr. Balasubramanian. Thank you. Thank you.